Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we cleared our soul at Kirillin and ended up at Lustrum. There's a couple things to do here, and then after we're done, I'm going to head to the Grave of the Silent Saint, where we can actually explore the place thanks to the new Wayfarer update. So, Lustrum. I've already done everything off camera that I know of to reduce my terror because it was extremely high before. It's still 64%, which isn't good, given that I'm probably going to gain terror exploring the Grave of the Silent Saint. We'll see how that goes. Um, first thing that I noticed... Murgatroids. Visit Murgatroid's Golden Tea Shop. I noticed this option. Examine a familiar looking plant. Black and purple leaves. It sits in a small pot on the countertop. I wonder if this has appeared here because I chose the option to tell the, the midnight plant to spread its tea. I bet it is. Midnight's flavor. Oh, that, says Melisine. That's for my big sister Amberly. Arrived a while back. She says it's the big new flavor over in Eleutheria, and I should get working on our own crop before anyone else gets in on it first. This one's still just a little baby plant, though. Hope it doesn't get too big. I'm sure its leaves took a nip of my fingers the other day. <laughs> hmm. I, that's such a cool little detail. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't do anything. It's not like you get any reward for looking at this, but just the acknowledgement. You know, that little wink like, yep, what you did has consequences. Or will have consequences in the future. Okay, the other thing, the Hanged Man pub. Let's go speak with Mr. Pennies. This is another thing I noticed. I can show them Mr. Barleycorn's seal. Remember Mr. Barleycorn was the person who seems to be basically in charge at... Why? I went over here in the reach as if that's going to find it. It's in Eleutheria. They were the basically leader of the House of Rods and Chains. And they gave me that seal just in case I found anybody else like them. They felt pretty lonely. And I didn't know what they were. I think I maybe mentioned the idea that they might be the... Un caretakers? Undertakers? I forgot exactly what these are called. But then I think I dismissed it for some reason. But no, apparently this is the same type of creature as Mr. Barleycorn. This moth-eaten creature looks pathetic in comparison, but there must be a connection. Mr. Pennies pounces on the seal. The Seneschal, it wheezes. One of seven. Still loyal? Yes, always loyal. Always waiting for reward. No reward for those who serve the messengers. Always outcasts. Always disappointed. Here, take seal. May help. Your, the seal of Mr. Penny's quality is now one. Take the seal to Mr. Barleycorn in the House of Rods and Chains. Huh. One of seven. Time to explore the grave of the silent saint. Almost there. Oh. Curator, that's what they were called, right. Oh, two of them. Curator's egg, the inconvenient aunt chuckles. Oh, pardon me, dear. I just got that. Wait, just... It's a joke? Curator's... Egg? I don't... I don't get the joke. Take it on board. Whoa, what the hell is this? Holy shit! Did taking it just increase my terror by like 15 or 20%? Or did this event do it? Or Hmm. Okay, we have a problem. As the strain on the crew increases, they begin to make mistakes. This one might prove fatal. A fire has broken out in the hold. Already, orange flames are inching towards the carefully packed munitions you are transporting. Shit. Hmm. Smother the fire with thirsty bombazine if I had it. Ah, right, that absorbs fire and light. 
Move the munitions away. This will prevent the explosion even if it leaves the rest of your cargo at the mercy of the fire. Ooh. Order your crew to fight the fires. 30% chance of success. Hell no. Evacuate the hold. Get yourself and your crew to safety and pray that your locomotive can survive the explosion. Mm -mm. No, move the munitions away. Um, wait, these are unchanged? So I didn't lose it. The only thing I lost was two supplies? It's not too bad. You help your crew heave the munitions out of the hold while the fire rages. It eventually burns itself out after claiming its tithe of your cargo. Okay, that's definitely a new event. I'm pretty sure that's probably from the new update. Anyway, I'm not exploring the grave now because <laughs> my terror is now 83%. Hmm. Well, best way to reduce terror is to go back to the circus. It's a bit of a long drive. Fly. I could go to the garden. That's a wonder. But I mean, that'll only reduce my terror by like 10% or so. Shit. Okay, well, uh, I think I'm going back to New Winchester, and I think I have to take out this curator. It's probably going to be able to catch up to me. I doubt I could outrun it. I don't know. I could try. Let's try. Am I going to even make it back to New Winchester? Probably. Okay, yeah, let's, let's just try to go past it. Still back there. It's not super fast, though. It is catching up, though. Yeah, I have to fight it. Fuck. Oh, god, never mind. <laughs> I mean, I do still have to fight it, probably, but I can't fight both at the same time. Oh, this is real bad. Oh, I think it might be leaving me alone. Not the scribe, but the curator. Alright, I'll see you back at New Winchester. Okay, my terror is at 96%. Jesus fucking Christ. I'm close to New Winchester, but goddamn am I scared. 4% away? I don't think I've ever been this high, ever. There it is, there it is, there it is. Pretty sure it's been enough time for going to New Winchester to reduce my terror, please. Thank God. 71%. Whew. Made it to the circus and visited the amusements a lot. <laughs> now I'm at 6% there. And we're all good. I'm at Titania now. Because I think I want to head to Albion pretty soon, actually. Because I know I have some stuff that I need to do there. Plus, it has been redesigned. So the map is going to be completely reset. So in preparation for that, I'm at Titania because when I go to Albion, I want to deliver the five firkins of red honey to the mausoleum. But do keep in mind that I don't actually know where the mausoleum is anymore. It's not going to be in the same place. So that might be a little bit harder than it sounds, but I'm sure we'll find it. I only need five with my concealed cavities, which I don't have yet, but it doesn't matter because I'm not going through any place where they're going to check me yet. I can hold six, but I'm going to take seven just as insurance in case the temptation gets too much and the guards that I post decide to partake themselves. Ah, here's a temptation of red honey. Set a watch, 58% chance of success. Success? And my terror just went down. All right, let's give this Grave of the Silent Saint thing a try again without 90% terror or whatever I had. I also took a stop at New Winchester along the way, by the way. Dumped off some stuff, repaired my hole, got some supplies and fuel, and 
Oh, and I also installed the compartments. All the hidden compartments for the frickins of red honey. Because I don't intend to go back before I go to Albion. I intend to go from here to Lustrum down to Port Prosper. Oh, right, the other egg. And what about the first curator? Is it still round? No curator that time. Whoa. Whoop. I'm, I'm wondering what that text means. Hicks Vent Draconis. Before it disappears, I think I better search for that. Ah, it's Latin for here be dragons. Oof. What a time for the big dog. <laughs> Check the driver's cabin. Steer the dog out by his goggles. It's also a remarkably clumsy process. Gentle tugs, nothing that might cause discomfort, but eventually you succeed at guiding him out of the driver's cabin. Good. I need the driver to be, well, I need them to have their full attention. Things are so tough. Ah. Take a trophy. Substantially reduce your terror. I'm at 31% again. That would actually be a good idea. Let's do it. You vanquished a monster of the wilderness. Take proof. I don't like it. I don't like actually taking a trophy. That just seems kind of... Kind of disgusting. But... That's damn good for our terror. Its vast jaw displays a row of yellowing fangs sharp as chisels. Each is stubbornly rooted in the scarlet glistening gum, and the beast's head itself is too huge to display. You settle instead for a long-fingered claw. It can hang in the engine room as a reminder of your victory. At least till the smell becomes intolerable. Ew. Okay, the Grave of the Silent Saint, which just a reminder, this is a messenger, and that is its jaw that you're seeing directly beneath us. A vast sheet of ice has frozen over the ossified corpse of a vanquished beast. The surface is pockmarked with failed mining attempts. Collapsed shafts extend into the frigid tomb, and abandoned mining equipment litters the ice like discarded toys. Legends and rumors gather about the beast entombed below, a mythic horde yet unclaimed. Oh, if I had explosives, I could try to use those. Only a 37% chance of success, though. If I had mining equipment, I could try that. The only thing I can do is use my crew, which has an 18% chance of success. Well... I guess we're doing that. A dozen hardy miners armed with picks and pluck, as it was done in the promise of days. Okay, what happens when I fail this? Because I'm going to fail it. Oh, fuck, I just lost four crew. 
your crew embark onto the ice, axes in gloved hands. Attempts at songs spark and die, as do the torches. The ice resists your blows, and a fierce, gnawing dark draws in. As the temperature plummets, someone mumbles the Lord's Prayer. The wind howls, the cold bites. You're forced to call a retreat. Not all of your crew return from their labors. I thought I would just, like, waste... I don't know. I, I thought I would gain terror. I didn't think I would lose 40% of my freaking crew. Hmm. Okay, well, I think my best bet is to switch out my assaying device with a mining drill and come back here with my 47% chance of success each time. I'll probably still lose people. But it shouldn't be as much because it only requires three people. Yeah. Nothing wholesome abides here. The wind howls. Your engine struggles to clear the ice frozen to it. Debris scatter in your wake, rolling across the surface like dice cast across a board. There's a fierce crunch, and then your engine is free. Lost one hole. I didn't think it would be so hard, but I mean, it makes sense. It is a giant beast carcass that is completely frozen over. I've got another temptation of red honey. Failure. Should be okay, I lost two. My new total is five. That's still enough to complete the prospect. A memorial. A cryptic stoker wants to hold a memorial service for the crew that have recently died in your service. Judging by his tattoos, of a storm studded with mouths, and his rattling collection of talismans, the ceremony is unlikely to be Christian. Well, it's definitely the storm that speaks. Forbid it. Attend and deliver eulogy myself. Approve and attend. Conduct the ceremony myself. I can't do that. Oh, that's cool. You have to be a priest to do it. Does that mean if you chose the priest title for yourself? Because I, I imagine priest is probably one of the titles, just like comrade. Is that what would make you a priest? 37% chance. Uh, let's approve and attend. You find a place at the back of the room and remove your hat. Thank God that succeeded, because I don't know what that would have looked like if I didn't. The cryptic stoker has painted his face storm gray. His talismans rattle like distant thunder. He orders the windows opened to let the sky in, and proceeds to deliver his rites. A mishmash of angelic in practice, new sequence hymns, and nonsense. In his patchwork ceremony, he speaks of the inadequacy of the present and the sanctity of the past, where the dead still live. He speaks of a storm that gathers lost voices to itself. The storm that speaks has noticed you. Looks like there's yet another curator's egg here. I'm not going to take that one, though. I'm good. Oh, Jesus. Please don't, don't see me. Don't see me. Don't see me. Whew. I don't want to find any curators right now. Okay. Let's try this again with a mining drill. A good drill and some patience are all you'll need to plunder the secrets of the silent saint. 47% chance of success. Yes! Your engineer set to the task with relish. Huge shards skitter across the frozen surface as the drill screams and chews apart the ice. Within scant hours, your rig has broken open a long chasm in the ice. Shafts of distant light set the ice a deep and unearthly blue. You fetch rope and begin your descent. Under the ice. Oh, I love that portrait over there. It's like icy flame. The descent is precarious. Flakes of ice trickle down the sides of the shaft, disturbed by your movement through the passage. You climb down, chest pressed against the packed ice. Periodically, you send up a flare to remind your waiting crew you're still alive. And then, you can descend no further. You... You hang have reached the... Wait, what? You hang have reached the great gray shell of the silent saint? 
I, I think and this is a period. I think this is okay. I think the word hang is not supposed to be there. And I think this is supposed to be a comma, not a period. You have reached the great gray shell of the silent saint. Recover unseasoned hours, recover scales to mend your hole or abandon. You will have to dig a new shaft to return if you abandon. Okay, well, my hole isn't hurt at all, so let's recover unseasoned hours. Legend tells that the saint gorged itself to death on a trove of hours. Really? Gorged itself on hours? The belly of the beast. Breaking the ice was hard. Breaking open the shell is harder still. Your knuckles bruise. The shell is hard as diamond. Your gorge rises. The scent of carrion is thick as fog. At last, the subdermal flesh of the saint is exposed. It quivers faintly, flesh bulging outward, an ancient digestive process still at work. You take out your bolt cutters. The hours are located deep in one of its stomachs, half digested but intact. Your sky suit drips with bilious ichor. It's time to be away. One barrel and five tear. Man, I was hoping for more. That's not a very good reward at all. A single barrel of unseasoned hours? I wonder if other stuff can happen? Let's try to make another shaft. Lost two people. The drill bit bites deep. Chunks of ice erupt from the surface and scatter across the frozen plain. A chorus of cheers falls silent as the drill stutters and dies. A pair of engineers go out to manually adjust the drill's position. Suddenly, and tragically... It whirs back to life. Work stops. Oh, come on. Yes. I'm just at the safe manning number for my ship. No, it's always the same. Unseasoned hours, scales to mend your hole, or just abandon. I guess more unseasoned hours, yet another barrel. Yeah, this is a huge disappointment. Dang. I like the little tidbits of lore, like the legend that it gorged itself on hours, and then I guess almost a confirmation of that by the fact that I find hours in its stomach. That's cool. But I really wish there was more I could do. Okay. Went to Lustrum and resupplied, drank some tea to reduce my tear, all that good stuff. Nothing special. And now I'm at Port Prosper. With a bit less health, because I fought a lot of dreadnoughts and stuff along the way. Now, I thought I had some business here. Mm, I think I had some, like a settler to drop off, maybe? Maybe not, I don't remember. But, let's write a port report. Performance at the Gaudy Widow. Is that a thing? I don't think that's a quest or anything like that. Yeah, let's do it. The vaudeville theater tends towards either quaint or vulgar. Or on good days, both. Located at the edge of the West End, overlooking the bridge, the gaudy widow promises unpretentious delights for most of the family. Although out of fashion in New London, the broad amusements of pantomime and vaudeville still carry favor with the well-heeled of the West End. Though they are, of course, careful to never enjoy themselves too much. She's behind you, a poster reads. Ah, what japes. <laughs> An enthusiastic peal of bells rings over the rooftops. The Albert clock is chiming the hour. Sit in the stalls. Oh. Oh, there's a couple things to do. Sit in the stalls. Enjoy yourself. Retain your dignity or take a box seat, but I can't do that. Ah, need to be... Embraced by the West Enders. Remember, the West Enders are the rich ones. East Enders are the not rich. Hmm. 75% chance of success. 75. Retain your dignity. Enjoy yourself. Sit in the stalls. Unlocked when eastward reputation is, you are embraced by the impoverished East Enders. Okay, so that's the East Ender option. Then let's do that. Sit in the stalls. 
You join a few familiar faces in the sticky seats near the stage, festooned with old programs and discarded bottles. From this almost vertical angle, you can see the peeling paint, the faded curtains, the pores on the actors' skins. The performance is a parody of the opening of The Avid Horizon and the first pioneer's entry into Albion. A lively round of betting soon breaks out. Where will the vicar pop up from next? You come away much richer than you entered. Cheers go up from the Haustus Height, where a team of patriotic mountaineers have scaled the cliff and unveiled the Union Jack. Gained 100 sovereigns. Ah, right. I offered transport to a settler a million years ago. They died, and I'm supposed to return their body. I hope we kept it in the freezer. Do we have a freezer? <laughs> it's been sitting here for a while. You find an address among the dead settler's belongings. A small house not far from the station. Well, I think we've seen that description before. Gain 100 sovereigns and 50 experience. I think that uh, what I had in mind for Port Prosper was a prospect to deliver seven bronzewood. I entirely forgot that, though, of course, so I don't actually have the bronzewood on me, so forget it. We're going to Albion. First time in the new Albion. Present myself to customs. Conceal it. 100% chance of success. Excellent. First class, yeah, that'll reduce our tear. It's at 23%. Now it's at 18. Away we go. What is this? I just arrived literally like a fourth of a second ago. A disturbance in the night. Mm. We had something very similar to this before. Except this time someone's knocking? I don't think that's what was happening last time. I think last time there was like... Something on our chest or we just fell back asleep. Anyway, answer your door. Someone is knocking. It's a stoker in her nightcap and gown. Her face is abnormally pale and her eyes hollowed. The residue of tears stain her cheeks. Sorry to disturb you, Captain. She trails off, rubs her eyes, and takes a deep breath. I've got a request. Can't we go back to Langley Hall? Uh, not right away, but soon. We... I need to go back. She looks at you imploringly. I need to go back, too. It's really cool to see that Langley Hall hasn't just affected me, but my crew as well. Agree. Someday soon. What the hell just happened to my hole? She smiles, shedding the exhaustion. Oh, the lads are going to be so happy, Captain. Thank you. I shan't disturb you again. She heads back to her bunk. Your crew are excited to return to Langley Hall. So much so that they start to make mistakes in their work. Oh, <laughs> Okay, the new Albion. Ta-da! Ah, oh, look at this. The new, slightly smaller map, completely unexplored again. Oh, that's so exciting. I get to re-explore it, and it's newer and better. Okay, well... Well, the transit relay's in a totally different spot. Before it was, like, here... Let's go to the center, try to find London. And I guess I won't cut any of this out, because, I mean, it's new and improved and everything's switched positions, so let's see it all. I'm gonna keep trying to spot differences. Oh! Oh, hello, deranged dreadnought. Okay, I can take you. Whoops. Didn't mean to detonate that right in front of them. Oh, 
such a satisfying glass shatter sound. Alright, what can I do? Claim its weaponry? Have I done that before? I don't think so. Yeah, the Dreadnought is a mangled knot, but its main weapon is intact. Perhaps you could extricate it. 100% chance of success. The Tears of Ostalot, that is definitely new. It's delicate work. The trick is unscrewing the bolts along the diagonals. Loosen one, then attack its opposing partner. Slowly, it eases away from the Dreadnought's hole. Once aboard, you can take a closer look. The gun is half vitrified. Miraculously, its glass springs and mechanisms still work. Bullets go in, razored glass, flechettes come out. It has glass springs? How does that work? Glass is supposed to be brittle. I love the fallen London universe. Is that a weapon I can use, by the way? Ah, oh, hearts 50 plus. Yeah, that's never gonna happen. My hearts are like 25. I think they added more obstacles, more like land to Albion, because before it was almost entirely open. Oh, look at that. Smoke coming out of that huge exhaust. I think that might be new. New or not, it looks really cool. I just love all these colors mingling together, the purple and the reddish haze of industry. Oh yeah, familiar haze of London smog has blown this far. A stoker sighs, homesick. Good old London fog. Smog. Shops line these lanes emblazoned with densely lettered signs. Oh no! Not the temptation of red honey again! If they fail, then I won't be able to complete the prospect. Oh, thank god. Thank you, guards. Oh, is that London? Right. No, that's one of the stations. Is that the smuggling station? Yeah, Wit and Vinegar Lumber Company. Do I have anything to do here? I don't know, let's check. I think I just saw something incredibly cool. Let me exit out of here. I think, see where my mouse is? I think there's a ship there, but it's on like a lower level. I think they added visuals for, for like ships doing stuff on lower levels where they're not actually like an active NPC that you can hit or shoot or whatever. Just going about their business? Yeah, that is so cool. That's definitely new. Makes the place feel more alive. Ah, we can do a couple things here. One thing is by the wit and vinegar sawing device. So I can just finally use this because my iron is at 50 plus. Um, you probably remember that my iron has been 49 for a long time. Well, at some point in the past couple episodes when I was chuckling around my officers, I realized that if I switched from the inadvisably big dog, which is plus one iron, to the Blemigan, that, uh, well, they have plus two iron. So that got me from 49 to 50. So I have exactly 50 iron. And I also have plus one mirror, I think. D did I also hit, like, 50 for mirrors or something? Oh, where am I at for that? Mm, no, I'm at 63. Oh, I must have been thinking about veils. Yeah, I'm still one short of 75 veils. So, let's buy this. It's just like the sawing device I currently have, with the bonus of two hidden compartments. Oh, I don't even have space for that. Um, oh, I can sell the frickins of red honey. Hmm. For slightly more than I bought them for. I think. I think they were a hundred each. Yeah, I see. Okay, so... 
they sell trunks of illicit literature here. Every place sells its own particular thing. Red honey, illicit literature, other stuff. It's 150 to buy it. To sell it back gives you 75, so you get a lot less money for selling it back to them because they sell it themselves. But for the other stuff, just based off of the frickin' of red honey, I think they give you slightly higher than you paid for it because it's bought from a different region. So you can actually make some money just from selling back to another smuggling place rather than directly completing a prospect. It's very little money though, I mean 15 per frickin', that's not much. But if you need to dump your stuff, you know, you know you need to dump it, it's better to do that than just space it. Uh, right, but I actually do have to space some of my stuff. Let's space a fuel. Now I can put this in. Boop. Eight cavities. <laughs> I have eight cavities, yay. <laughs> Gotta collect them all and then you get to go to the dentist. Oh yeah, there's another thing I can do too. I can catch up with the blind bruiser. Catch up on old times. I couldn't do this before because I didn't have nightmares, but now I'm at two nightmares. It would ease your burden to share them with someone who knows you. This will reduce your nightmares by one. You may only do it once. Confessions. You tell him of your nightmares. He sympathizes. He's no stranger to midnight visitations. In return, he talks about his failed attempt to go straight after coming to the heavens. I didn't set up the wit and vinegar as a cover for smuggling. I intended to make a go of it, put the past behind me, become a respectable businessman. But things kept going wrong. I thought it was cursed. But you know what? I think living an honest life is just bloody difficult, he shakes his head. It's a hard road to walk, the straight and narrow, and my feet are crooked. Ah, oh, there's another ship. More ships. I wonder what the different types are. Like how many different types of ships there are. I can't identify them all though. There was one that looked like, I think one of the ships I used. Yeah, that one. Isn't that the big cargo ship that I used? My first ship after the default one? First one I upgraded to? Oh, and that's... Another one I saw was the uh, Liberation of Night ship. Oh, look at this. Oh, is that a used station? Bunch of used stations after I find a free one? Here's a free one. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, okay, so what they did to the whole station area of London, St. Dominic's Station, before it, you know, you could see all these, like, train tracks coming into it, but the whole place did feel pretty dead because they didn't have any of those ships flying underneath you and stuff, so that you never saw anybody else, and the only place to dock was just this one strip with just one dock that was always open for you, so it just felt like the whole place was made for you and wasn't really occupied by anybody else. But they've really changed that. Ships all around, multiple docking places with a million tracks and most of them are filled by other people. Yeah, that's a really nice change. Okay, we have arrived back at London and I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, well, I guess I'm not going back to Eletheria for a little while, so let's explore the new Albion.